Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have a slightly more difficult problem. We have three sources, two are voltage sources, and one is what we call a dependent current source. That makes it a little bit more difficult to work with. We're trying to find the voltage across the two ohm resistor, or another way of looking at it, the voltage from this node right here down to this node. This could be assumed to be reference to a zero volt ground. So what is the potential difference from that location to this location? The reason, the reason why I say that location to this location because we're going to plan to get rid of that 2 ohm resistor but keep that gap there and try to find the voltage across that gap. First what we're going to do is simplify this. We're going to convert that from a dependent current source to a dependent voltage source which means that the resistor in parallel now becomes a resistor in series. So it'll look like this when we uh, continue with this. Our 2 ohm resistor is still there. Our 6 volt voltage source is still there. For the time being we still have our 2 ohm resistor and we still have our 18 volt voltage source over here. Like that. But what's changed now is we're going to change that into a resistor and a dependent voltage source plus or minus we still have to figure out how big that is the four ohm resistor now is moved here in series we still have a two ohm resistor we still have a two ohm resistor there and we're still looking for the voltage across those two points but now look at it it's changed quite a bit in in uh, in form let's keep labeling it this is 18 volts this is 6 volts now how do we change the from a current to a voltage Remember that Ohm's law says that I equals V over R, which means that V is equal to I times R. In this case, the current was 0.25 times the voltage across this gap right here between that point and this point. And we have to multiply that times the resistance, which is 4 ohms. 4 times 0.25 is 1. That becomes equal to V sub X. So the dependent voltage here would be V sub X, which is the same as the voltage across this gap right there. Okay, what do we do next? Hmm, what we can do now is turn this into a current source so we can combine those two resistors. Let's go ahead and try to do that. So this now becomes a current source. We'll figure out how big that current is. We'll have a resistor here. That resistor will have to be 2 ohms, along with this resistor here, which is a 2 ohm resistor. Remember that we're still trying to find the voltage across that, call it V sub X. We still have our 4 ohm resistor here, and we have the dependent voltage source, plus minus V sub X, and the independent voltage source, 18 volts on this side. 18. Now what we're going to do is we're going to combine these two resistors. Since they're in parallel, it's product over the sum. The product is 4, the sum is 4. To combine those two, you get a single 1 ohm resistor. Oh, this is still the 4 ohm resistor, can't forget that. So this will look like this now. Oh, I need to find the current here from voltage to current. I equals V over R. Our voltage here was 6 volts and the resistance in um, series was 2. That becomes 3 amps, so this becomes a 3 amp source. Now I can combine those two resistors. They will look like this. I still have my current source. I have a single 1 ohm resistor now. I'm still looking for the voltage from there to there, V sub X, that hasn't changed. I still have my 4 ohm resistor, my independent current uh, voltage source, plus or minus. Uh, I should not plus or minus, plus and minus, the two directions, plus and minus 18 volts. This is still V sub X. This is still 4 ohms. And connect all this. So all I've done here is I've combined the 2 ohm and the 2 ohm resistor into a single resistor. This is still the 3 amp source. And I'm still looking for the voltage between this location and that location. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this into a voltage source with a resistor in series. Come over here. This now becomes a voltage source plus minus. Here's my 1 ohm resistor. 
and I'm going to put a dot there and I put a dot there. These are the two nodes. Those nodes are still there except there's no resistor in there anymore. It's a gap now, but I'm still looking for the voltage across that gap, V sub X. I still have my 4 ohm resistor, my dependent current source, and my independent voltage source. Oh, I should say that's a voltage source. This is an independent voltage source. This is 4 ohms. The direction here is plus minus V sub X, and here it's plus minus 18 volts. Now here, what will be the voltage there? The voltage will be equal to the current times the resistance. Notice the current here was 3 amps, the resistance was 1 ohm. 3 amps, 1 ohm, that's equal to 3 volts. This now becomes a 3 volt source. The next step, we need to come up with some clever way to continue with this problem, and I think what we can do here is use the mesh method. I can go around this loop right here. There's a gap here, so I'm going to go around this loop right here. And the current in the loop, in the whole loop, is I1, so let's call this I1, and I'm going to go around this loop right here, and since the current is the same, I'll call it I sub 1. So what I'm doing here is I'm going around two meshes, kind of in an artificial way, starting from here, around the loop, and then jumping from there to there. I know that the current in here is equal to I1, and then I'll go again, starting from here, jump across the gap, and around this part of the circuit, and know that this is I1 there. Notice that the gap they have both in common, the left and the right, have this gap in common, which is V sub X. Let's go ahead and do that. Starting from here, I have a 3 volt rise, minus a, a drop across the resistor, which is the current I1 times 1, 1 times I1, and then I go across this gap, which is minus V sub X, and that adds up to zero. Simplifying that equation, which is simply getting rid of the 1 here, it's 3 minus I sub 1 minus V sub X is equal to zero. Going around this loop right here, starting from this point, jumping across, I get a plus V sub X. Going across this resistor is minus 4 times I sub 1. Going from there to there is minus V sub X. And going from there to there is minus 18 volts, getting back to this point where I started, which is equal to zero. What I see now is I have I sub 1 on one side and I have I sub 1 on the other side. I can solve these simultaneously and get rid of the I sub 1. All I need to do is multiply this equation by 4, or maybe a minus 4, combining the V sub x's here. Oh, oh, no, let's see here. V sub x minus V sub x, that cancels out. I end up with minus 4 I sub 1 minus 18 equal to 0, or minus 4 I sub 1 equals to positive 18, or I sub 1 is equal to 4 goes into 18, 4 and a half times, that's minus 4.5 amps. So what I did here, since V sub x is canceled, I was able to solve for I sub 1. I could then plug that into my equation over here, and that then becomes 3 minus a minus 4.5 minus V sub X equals 0. Moving the V sub X over there, we get 3 plus 4.5 equals V sub X. And finally, V sub X is equal to 7.5, and units are, of course, volts. So I was able to solve using a clever trick there and using the method of source transformations until I had to simplify it as much as I could to find the voltage between this point and that point across the 2 ohm resistor. It ends up being 7.5 volts. So first what we did is we simplified the circuit as much as we could, and essentially at this point we can go ahead and solve around two meshes, artificially so, because there's no branch there, but there's a voltage drop. I use that voltage drop on both sides. V sub X cancels out here. I can solve for I sub 1, and I can plug that in the other equation to solve for V sub X. So again, the source transformation technique can be a very clever, very helpful technique to make something fairly complicated into something fairly simple. And that's how it's done.